So good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for, for coming here and being here. Um, my presentation is on library services to teens and tweens. Um, and I think of that as basically the age group when they're old enough to choose to come to the library. Um, little bit of background on me. I have not been working in the library for the last two years. Um, I've been was moved over to help with the city COVID stuff. Um, but I worked at the Juneau Public Library for about 20 years before that, um, doing youth services. And born and raised in Alaska. And I love this age group. I think they tend to, they tend to get lost. There's a lot of good focus on early literacy and adults. But, um, but there's a lot of stages in between those two. So that's what we're talking about today. This slide we're looking at right now, this is a picture of the teen room at the New Valley Library in Juneau. It looked like this for about a week before it got a little more lived in. But, uh, but it's still a really great space. So who are teens? Um, they are more than just giant kids. They, yeah, there's a, a very distinct developmental stage that's happening. Um, and so the needs are very specific, especially for young teens. On the slide, it says 13 to 15, but I find kids even as young as nine or 10 sometimes think of themselves as teen-ish. So we want to honor that, um, treat them as such. Um, and then the older teens, the 16 to 18 year olds are becoming even more independent and, and still need services from their library. But you can't mix the two groups. <laughs> so they're listed here separate. And as an age group, teenagers receive the least amount of funding from government, foundations, corporate, um, also charitable giving, all tends to go towards kids or adults, which makes libraries even more valuable, supporting these in-betweeners. And then the bottom point, that's just me, um, how I'm how I think of teens, anybody who's choosing to come to the library and in charge of their own activities and choices. So why they are important, these are national numbers. Um, approximately 14 million middle and high school students are on their own after school. Eight in 10 Americans want all children and teens to have some type of organized activity or a safe place after school. Schools tend to do a great job on the organized activities, but sometimes kids just need a place. And that's where libraries can come in. And we can also support and build up activities that are happening in the schools and other places. So why libraries? Largely just because we have the space. We are free. We are welcoming to anybody. It's a pretty low bar on basic behavior. Aside from that, anybody can come anytime. And that's, that's a really rare and valuable thing, especially for young people. We're also a place where they can participate. We call on them to help us make displays, set the rules. Um, and that's really valuable to give them a little bit of the power and participation in the function of the library. And there's also a trust and respectability that it can be really valuable, particularly kids that are coming from any kind of unsafe background. Um, there's a lot of a lot of organizations aren't trusted by the caregivers, but there's hardly anyone who will object to their kids spending time at the public library or school library, any library um, are seen as, as a respectable and safe place for their kid to go. Um, and that's that can be kind of subversive. <laughs> um, 
and important so we can protect those kids. And then this last point I just love that that there's a current shift towards focusing on what a library does over what a library has. So we're not just shelves where we store things, but we are active, we do stuff. Also, please, I, I don't have access to the chat, but um, Julie is here monitoring. So if you have any thoughts or comments, please feel free to unmute yourself or throw something into the chat. Amelia, there's nothing uh, at the moment that I expect okay. there will be. Then I will just ramble and click through slides. Oh. Volunteering is a huge way that we can engage teens. Um, all the kids in these pictures have required numbers of volunteer service hours for various reasons. Um, the library is a great place to do that. American government classes require them. Um, exchange student programs require them. National Honor Society requires them. And we can be a really fun place to give them that chance. Um, we also have had kids volunteer that are not required to. They're just bored and looking for a way to be meaningfully engaged and contribute. And we love that. So on the left, Ahmed is judging our bookmark contest. And on the right, these are National Honor Society kids that are making the story time bubbles that MJ shared about earlier. So these are pieces of PVC pipe and they're wrapping them in colorful electrical tape. And they came out really cute. And now when families come to story time, they, they have their own little bubble to be in. Um, but my favorite part was having the kids make the rings. So there's, there's always a way that we can engage kids as volunteers. Um, if they come in with no notice at all, we can make them shelf read or take you know, baby wipes to the puzzle pieces and board books. But usually we try and do something more fun like these events. A lot of people have been doing virtual programming. Um, we haven't with our kids over the this time, but I found some neat things happening at other libraries. Um, if you have a web page where kids are engaged with you, one popular one is Bookface. So the girl on the left is I found online <laughs> the bear on the right that was our summer intern and then i enjoyed one library has this a book review site where the kids can write their own book reviews and i think that's a really fun and engaging idea so i copied and pasted an image for you so we try and have ongoing passive programming. Um, displays are the most obvious. We have kids pick out the books for display, but I found some other neat things. Um, our library checks out board games and we have a few that just live in the teen room. There's on the right, there's a, a common bookmark that folks have so that kids can they don't have to come and ask a stranger for any of these subjects, but they can still find good resources. And then the top two were just things I found online that looked like fun, engaging makerspace sort of activities that you can set up and take down anytime. Any of either of those could be turned into an in-person program or just left for kids to to create something on their own. Test prep and career guidance. Um, some libraries do, do in-person study things, but, but we don't. We just make sure that we have all the resources available. Of course, live homework help is unbeatable, um, but then the physical books and, and the middle image just made me laugh. So there you go. We've been doing this a long time. Outreach and collaboration is one of my favorite kind of events. Um, 
the best way to have a successful program is to find a successful program in your area and see how you can help. Battle of the Books, we adore. And we're being in one of the bigger cities, we have two middle schools and two high schools. And so having a public librarian be the moderator or a judge can be helpful because we're impartial. Um, and sometimes we've had district battles at the public library, which would work even if you only have one school. It still makes something a little special to be in a different place. The middle photo is the, um, well, you can see the, the logo, the Division of Juvenile Justice. We have a monthly book club for the kids there and sometimes get fun, get grant to give books to the kids, which is, um, it's wonderful. It's, it's funny how giving a gift that they get to keep is really meaningful and special for the kids that live in facilities like this. But even when we're not able, just our time and our interest in them is it's a lot of fun. Every every time I go, I learn and hear something new. A really great group of kids. And then on the right, that's one of our middle schools. This photo, of course, is a Battle of the Books competition, but I go, or I did, and I hope to again, go once a month on their lunch break and almost no planning. I just buy a box of Oreos on the way and whoever wants to skip dealing with the cafeteria during lunch break can come to the library. We push the tables together and there's nothing as powerful as asking a middle school kid their opinion on something. They have so many ideas and so I ask them things like what's the best book you've read this month or what book universe would you like to live in? What's, and the fun one is, what's the worst book you've read lately? They very much enjoy that one. Um, and we just go around the table and they share their thoughts. And then I go back to the library. It's a really, really simple, but really easy and effective program. And then after school, when they come into the public library to play Minecraft and wrestle, there's a familiar face behind the desk. And that's a real, it's an easy win, a lot of fun. And it gives me a little more, you know, if we do have to redirect some behavior, I'm not just the grumpy lady at the front desk, but I'm the lady that gave them a cookie and asked what book they liked. So in-person programming will again happen. Um, Honestly, at our library, we're in such a big city, there's a lot of activities for kids. And our biggest wins are supporting other things that are already successful, like going to the school for the after school programs and things. But, um, but in person programs are definitely a gift for places where they do work. So food, when that becomes an option, you could not go wrong with a ice cream sundae bar green screen stuff, board games, maker spaces, laser tag, apparently, at some library. And this is where I got all this stuff. All, all four of these are useful websites, routine stuff. And that's my contact info. So those are all the slides that I brought. Um, since I'm, this is my, like most of us, this was my first time presenting over Zoom. So I'm, I'm used to a little more engagement instead of just talking straight for an hour. Um, looks like I only managed to talk straight for 15 minutes. So if anyone, um, I would love to hear what kind of older kid, young teen and older teen programs you've been doing. Amelia, do you want to stop sharing and let people um, so you can see them? Sure. So yeah, let's let's turn this into a conversation now. That'd be great.
Hey, Heather. <laughs> I have a question, actually. You know, I saw your you had the sign with the tough topics. Yeah. And I was curious, are there some resources that you direct to uh, teens to? Because we used to have a the SLED databases used to have a teen health and wellness, and I don't think they have that anymore. So I was curious if there's a resource that you have found useful. We we don't, um, and we don't currently have a tough topics bookmark. Because every time we start to do one, someone thinks of another subject that's even more important. And we've never created the perfect one, therefore we've never done it. Um, um, yeah, the teen health and wellness, that's one of those things that I did a workshop once, um, a program where I offered to, to teach people how to use it. And that was one of the most responded to programs across the desk and on social media people were sharing and complimenting and thanking and nobody showed up um, which happens <laughs> i mean I think, but all those people did know that the resource existed um, but it just didn't get much use i think kids are getting that information from the teen health center and Zach Gordon, um, there's just other resources. They're not, if they're coming into the library, then I can just show them the section. Um, okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone else have a resource or if a kid has one of these, a tough subject? Ah. So here's Kelsey. We have a tough topics bookmark here at Anchorage Public Library. Here's a template link if anyone wants to, nice, take their own and take the bones and make it their own. Thank you, Kelsey. We might do that. You can all just look in the chat for that link. That's neat. Does anyone else have a resource that they would? They would share with a kid with a more sensitive question or health related. All right. Does anyone have experience with at programming? Have you been doing passive programs or virtual programs during the past couple of years? I see two people talking, but they're both muted. <laughs> so, but I'd love to hear from you. <laughs> or you might just be talking to coworkers in the room. That's fine. Okay, would you guys, okay. It, would it be helpful? You want me to stop the recording so you can ask questions? I know sometimes the recording can be a damper to communication. Show me if that's what you guys want, you know, use the reactions and raise your hand. Well, why don't you, Julie? Because it's not okay. useful for anyone yeah. to watch the recording and hear me just. Okay, I'm going to stop it. I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs> okay. Are you sure you want to stop? Yeah. 